Hello, how's it going? Today, we're talking about the Pandaren Revolution. We're now 12,000 years before the Dark Portal, and although the Thunder King's dead, life hasn't gotten any easier for the mortal races in the Mogu Empire, so they're gonna do something about it. Let's go! Lei Shen was followed by a number of nasty successors, each one crueler than the last. The current emperor, Lao Fei, was no exception. He'd earned himself the title of Slave Binder, and as you can guess, he didn't earn this title by helping old ladies across the street and giving candy to babies. Lao Fei would tear slave families apart for the smallest of things. Parents were separated, children were sent to the Great Wall of Serpent Spine to die as fodder against the Mantid Swarm. A particular Pandaren experienced this, a brewmaster named Kang. His son was sent to the wall and his wife died trying to stop it, and Kang was understandably annoyed by this. After nearly succumbing to despair, his thoughts began to circle around one question. Why the balls did they do this? Kang meditated on the slavery of his people, and he reached a conclusion. The cruelty shown towards slaves was not a sign of the Mogu's strength. It was quite the opposite. They'd grown dependent on their servants. Without them, they were nothing. Kang devoted his life to exposing this vulnerability. Unless a slave was sent to the serpent spine, they were not allowed to touch a weapon, so Kang taught himself to use his own body as one. He disguised his attacks as an artistic dance to avoid suspicion. Are you doing martial arts? Don't know what you're talking about, I'm just, I'm just dancing. Oh, okay then. When he finally mastered his techniques, he challenged his fellow slaves to strike him, but none could. He'd dodge and weave and dance his way around their attacks, and he'd be all like, Stop trying to hit me and hit me! The slaves begged Kang to teach them how to fight unarmed, so Kang did, and word of this strange combat method spread quickly among the oppressed peoples of the Mogu Empire. Hundreds of slaves adopted Kang's teachings and devoted themselves to learning this art, known thereafter as the Way of the Monk. Word began to reach Mogu ears, so Kang relocated his followers to Kunlai's summit. In secret, the rebels built a monastery and began to further train themselves. It was at Kunlai's summit that Kang discovered something unexpected, the prison of Zhuen the White Tiger. Kang learned from Zhuen, discovering the secrets of inner strength that lay within every heart. Kang took this information immediately to his followers. The Pandaren monks were ready to fight. Their first victory came at the Mogu Shan vaults, where the engine of Nalak Shah lives. The rebels successfully drove the Mogu away from the source of their flesh-shaping power, which is bloody tactical genius! This victory not only heartened the Pandaren, but also drew other races into the rebellion. The Hosen, the Jinyu, the Bloody Grummels, and a bunch of big burly cow people called the Yongol. I know I keep mocking the Grummels, but in all honesty, if they became a playable race, I wouldn't even hesitate. I'd be 100% Grummel. Think of the bag space! The revolution had grown, and as Kang had suspected, the Mogu had been too reliant on their slaves and the more that rebelled, the more the Empire fell into chaos. The Grummels, masters of communication and trade, obviously, disrupted the Mogu supply lines. The Yongol led raiding parties to wreak havoc in the northwest. The Hosen dug tunnels to infiltrate Mogu strongholds. The Jinyu communed with water and somehow saw the future, which would allow them to command the rebellion on when to strike and when to run, which is convenient. Eventually, Lao Fei's forces retreated to the Vale. Kang knew that the Enchanted Land could sustain them for as long as they desired. The rebellion was going to need to expose themselves and launch an offensive. So he immediately did that. Didn't think twice about it. Led the charge himself. He fought Lao Fei directly, hand to hand, and defeated him. But, not without sustaining mortal wounds in return, the slave binder and the former slave died together. The now freed slaves considered seeking revenge against the surviving Mogu, straight up butchering them. Yet one of Kang's most promising students calmed them. Song was his name, and he'd memorized many of Master Kang's philosophies and tales. Song retold these stories again and again to the liberated slaves, reminding them of Kang's commitment to justice, not revenge. He walked from one end of the fallen empire to the other for the rest of his life, sharing these stories and urging all creatures to find emotional balance within themselves. During his journeys, Song became aware of a dark power within the earth of the Vale and surrounding regions. Yasharj's lingering essence seemed to latch onto and amplify negative emotions, giving rise to malevolent spirits known as the Shah. By spreading Kang's teachings, Song hoped to negate the Old God's influence and nullify the Shah. There were others that followed in Song's footsteps. These law walkers were not only skilled storytellers, but also conflict mediators, diffusing tense situations with stories and poems. Which I can't imagine is an easy thing to do, to be honest. And so began a time of peace. A new empire emerged, made up of the liberated people, and built on the principles of justice, wisdom, and being nice. And we're leaving it there! I don't mind this video having a nice ending. It's been a while. In the next video, we'll be looking at the Yongol in more detail. It looks very likely that it won't be a very long video, so it's entirely possible that I'll upload it at some point this weekend as just a little extra mini video for you guys. It's definitely worth going through though. Scenarius is introduced. 
and there's a reason why the Yorn Girl looked like the Tauren. So if you want to see that, subscribe and come back whenever that video appears on the weekend at some point. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, talk to me in the comments, or each other. How many of you guys want to play as a Grummel? Is it just me? It's probably just me. But all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!